Hello. And welcome to the viewers of this video. This is the Orange Fan here, bringing you another entry for the episode Recap and Thoughts category. This video will be dedicated to the B segment of episode 75 of Codename Kids Next Door, Operation Amish. We begin this segment at the Kids Next Door 2x4 Technology Convention. This segment takes place after the events of its sibling segment, Operation Science. Sector F has won the Chocolate Wrench Award for this year's convention, and number two is grumbling about this because he believes his I can't believe it's not Booger can do what Sector F's item can do and so much more. Number 42 understands where number two is coming from. Number 42 admits that he's disappointed that he didn't win the Chocolate Wrench Award for this year's convention. And we quickly find out that number 42's item is Treehouse Seeds. Number 42 shows number two one of these treehouse seeds and it's still in its package. Number two is holding on to the package to get a better look at it and the treehouse seed and he compliments number 42 for both. While number two is holding the package, some of his I can't believe it's not booger gets onto the package because number two was using the I can't believe it's not booger like a yo-yo earlier. So when number two tries to return the package to number 42. Number 42's response is to say that number two can hold on to that particular package. Afterwards, number 42 inquires number two if he has any plans now that the convention is over, because some of the Kids Next Door operatives are planning to meet up to watch a Dr. Time Space in the Continuums marathon, and number 42 it extends an invitation to number two. But before number two can answer, the four other Sector V operatives arrive, and number four punches number 42 in the shoulder and mocks him for watching Dr. Time Space in the Continuum. Uh, number 42 admits that he doesn't understand, or yes, number 42 doesn't understand why some Kids Next Door operatives give other operatives a hard time for watching Dr. Time Space in the Continuums. And number two admits that he doesn't understand either. Number two also admits that he likes Dr. Time Space in the Continuums. Number four's response to hearing this is to prepare to punch number two's shoulder, but before number four has a chance to do so, several 2x4 technology vehicles suddenly appear in the convention center. These vehicles look like giant caterpillars, and they're beginning to abduct kids next door scientists, including number two. Fortunately, thanks to a combination of help from the four other Sector V operatives and number two's I can't believe it's not Booger, number two is freed from the clutches of these giant caterpillar vehicles and the Sector V operatives escape by flying off in the scamper before any of these uh, giant caterpillar vehicles can try to recapture number two. While they're flying off, most of the Sector V operatives are confused about what just happened with regards to those giant caterpillar vehicles, but number one has his suspicions, and number one admits that he's not supposed to tell his teammates this, but he doesn't think there's any harm in telling his teammates now, um, now that he believes that the uh, cat is out of the bag, so to speak. So number one proceeds to reveal to his teammates that last week all the sector leaders of the organization had received an emergency message from Kids Next Door Global Command. And according to this message, Kids Next Door Global Command have reason to believe that there is a splinter cell in the organization. Number one further explains that the splinter cell consists of Kids Next Door operatives with uh, an extremist mindset. While the majority of the organization is about stopping adult tyranny, the splinter cell wishes to eliminate all adults. Yes, it doesn't matter if the adults are good, bad, or morally ambiguous, they wish to eliminate all adults. And number one suspects that the splinter cell is abducting kids next door scientists in order to force them to build some sort of super weapon that would further their extremist agenda. 
Number one also reveals how he thinks very highly of number two's skills as a Kids Next Door scientist, because number one admits that he thinks that the Splinter Cell would have some sort of unstoppable super weapon if they were able to capture number two. So number one thinks that for the time being, it's best if number two stays hidden in an area that the Splinter Cell wouldn't expect to find him. And number one also thinks that number two should stay hidden until the Splinter Cell has been dealt with. So the Sector V operatives head to a farm, and we quickly find out that this farm is Sector A, the Amish sector of the kids next door. Number one introduces number two to number Jebediah. Number Jebediah is wearing an outfit that most would probably expect an Amish person to wear. And number Jebediah is also wearing, um, yes, number Jebediah is also wearing a comb that's being hung by his chin by some rope. Or yes, uh, the comb is being hung by a, yeah, there's a string, a strand of rope attached to this comb. And um, yeah, there's a strand of, rope attached to this comb and uh, he's wearing the strand of rope and comb combination so that the comb is uh, on his chin. It's meant to look like a beard. And um, and number one also reveals, yes, after introducing number Jebediah, number one also tells number two that number two is not to build or use any 2x4 technology while he's at Sector A because it would draw attention to Sector A, including the possibility of drawing attention or getting the attention of the splinter cell. Yes, number one says uh, number two can't build or use 2x4 technology while he's at Sector A because it would draw attention and it could lead to the splinter cell finding number two. Number Jebediah assures number one that number two won't build or use any 2x4 technology while he's here because 2x4 technology is forbidden within Sector A. Number two is horrified to hear this, and he's pleading to number one to let him uh, go with them and not stay at Sector A. But number one assures number two that number two will be fine and safe while he's in Sector A or at Sector A. And then the four other Sector V operatives leave. Number two is not happy that he's stuck in uh, Sector A now. Number Jebediah then introduces number two to the two other Sector A operatives, number Ezekiel and number Rebecca. Um, they're also wearing outfits that one would expect an Amish person to wear, and number Ezekiel is wearing a fake beard like number Jebediah. Um, number two points out that the Sector A operatives' code names or designated numbers aren't actually numbers. And number Jebediah's response is to say something along the lines about how Sector A doesn't need uh, any fancy city numbers. Number Jebediah then tells number two to hand over all the 2x4 technology weapons that he has with him. Number two argues that he'll need it in order to defend himself if the splinter cell arrives. But number Jebediah insists that number two hand over the 2x4 technology weapons. He brings up how tech... Yes, he brings up how 2x4 technology and violence are forbidden within uh, Sector A, and number two must follow the Sector A ways while he's uh, in Sector A. So number two begrudgingly hands over the 2x4 technology weapons that he has, and it takes an hour for him to hand over all of the 2x4 technology weapons. Afterwards, number Jebediah then insists that number two uh, dress like the Sector A operatives, Number two is against this, but the next scene shows number two is wearing an outfit that one would um, expect an Amish person to wear, and he's also wearing a fake beard. Number two also finds out that, um, or yes, number two is also shown the Sector A treehouse, which is just a shrub right now. Um, uh, the Sector A operatives are using the barn as temporary headquarters until the treehouse is fully grown. But Number Jebediah says that Sector A's operatives are in no rush to uh, uh, have the treehouse fully grown. Number two also finds out that um, Sector A's scamper, or Sector A's equivalent to the scamper, is a carriage being pulled by a dog rather than a 2x4 technology vehicle. And number two continues to feel bored while he's at Sector A because at first number two is led to believe that there is a 
there that there is an egg napper. But when they enter the um the chicken coop, number Ezekiel realizes that the um the area where uh, the eggs are apparently missing that was the area where number Ezekiel uh, got some eggs to make an omelet earlier in the day. So. Yes, uh, this reaffirms how number two is bored while he's at Sector A. Then the next day rolls around and number Jebediah wakes number two up while it's four o'clock in the morning. When number two points out that it's four in the morning, number Jebediah's response is that they must have overslept. So uh, next up, we see a montage of, of scenes showing number two helping the Sector A operatives with chores. It eventually ends with... Um, uh, number Rebecca is watering uh, the treehouse, and number Rebecca admits that it is hard work, and number two grumbles about uh, the hard work. He calls it stupid work, and he insists that this isn't the way to grow a kids next door treehouse. Number Rebecca, or this makes number Rebecca curious. She inquires number two about how Sector V grows a um, grows a treehouse. And number two is about to explain, but number Jebediah overhears this, and he cuts off number two. And he acts dismissive towards um, what other sectors... Or yes, um, number Jebediah acts dismissive towards any other sector's um, methods for growing kids next door tree houses. Number Jebediah insists that it's better for one to use their own hands and hard work rather than... Um, rather than any lazy methods. Number two takes great offense when he hears number Jebediah call other methods lazy. Number two reveals that he still has the, um, he still has the treehouse seed package that he got from number 42. He didn't hand it over with the two by four technology weapons. And number two tells number Rebecca that um, the treehouse seed is the result of, of years of hard work and dedication so that um, it would be um, much simpler to grow kids next door tree houses. And number two decides to demonstrate this by throwing a tree house seed into um, the outhouse. Number Jebediah tries to um, stop number two from doing this, but he's not successful. So when number two throws the tree house seed into the outhouse, um, a tree house uh, grows. Um, yes, a tree is fully grown and um, there's even a tree house within the tree uh, it all happens within a matter of seconds. And number Jebediah is uh, frustrated by this. He says that number two has brought attention to Sector A. And we do see soon enough that number Jebediah isn't kidding. Those, those giant caterpillar vehicles suddenly appear. And number two rushes to get his 2x4 technology weapons to defend himself. But, the, um, but one of these giant caterpillar robots or giant caterpillar vehicles uh, intercepts number two. But number Jebediah managed to acquire one of the two by four technology weapons and he hands it to number two. Number two is surprised that number Jebediah actually held onto it since they don't believe, since sector A isn't about two by four technology or violence. Number Jebediah admits this is the case, but number two isn't. So he's pretty much saying that number two can loophole or yes, he's pretty much telling number two a loophole that he can use his 2 by 4 technology weapons to defend himself. Number Jebediah also tries to hold them off using um, some farming equipment. Or yes, he uses farm equipment to hold off this giant caterpillar vehicle so that number two can escape. More of these giant caterpillar vehicles appear though, and it looks like number Rebecca uh, is jumping towards number two to get him out of the way. But once number two and number Rebecca are away from the other two Sector A operatives, number Rebecca has a 2 by 4 technology weapon with her, and she insists that she's going to go with the giant caterpillar vehicles, and number two is going to go too. One of the giant caterpillar vehicles appears uh, in front of them before number two can fully process what's going on. But then someone emerges from the giant caterpillar vehicle, this individual is none other than number 42. Number two is baffled by this. He questions if number 42 is really part of the splinter cell, but number 42's reaction is to panic, uh, thinking that the splinter cell is nearby. He apparently found out about them, and he comments about how dangerous those extremists are, or something along those lines at least. So number two quickly finds out though that these giant caterpillar vehicles are not affiliated with the splinter cell, and uh, number 42 and number Rebecca uh, inquire if number two will join them. 
So number two admits he doesn't know what's actually going on, and they reveal to him that these giant caterpillar vehicles and the kids next door scientists being abducted was actually a rouge. Or yes, it was just a trick that they were doing for the towards the other kids next door um, operatives. Um, the kids next door scientists set up this trick in order to make it look like they were being captured. But in reality, this was just an excuse for them to watch the Dr. Time, Space, and the Continuums marathon without any interruptions and without any of the non-scientist operatives finding out about it and making fun of them. Number Rebecca admits that she's been joining the Kids Next Door scientists to watch Dr. Time, Space, and the Continuums, and she requests that Number 2 uh, not reveal this to Number Jebediah. Number two is baffled that they would um, go through such extreme measures to try and watch um, the Dr. Time, Space, and the Continuums marathon without any interruptions. But when they uh, re repeat their question about if he's going to join them or not, number two is um, all too happy to join them. So the next scene is the end credits scene, which shows us a bit of the episode. Or yes, the end credits scene shows us a clip of the episode, of one of the episodes of Dr. Time, Space, and the Continuums. And this segment, or this scene of the Dr. Time, Space, and the Continuums episode is actually uh, live action. It's a live action scene. And then we do see, um, we do see a quick scene in animated form showing number two, number 42, and number Rebecca and several other uh, individuals watching the um, watching the uh, episode. Um, the um, the scene, the animated scene, is a is a recycled scene from Operation Uncool in season three. But yeah, that was the end credits scene. So that is how we end this segment. So yes, this segment, yes. Um, so episode seventy five follows the example of two other episodes where both segments of the episodes are connected to each other in some way. Um, this first happened in Season 5, where Operation Outbreak was an indirect sequel to Operation Virus. Kree's actions in Operation Virus led to, um, led to um, the events of Operation Outbreak. And we also had a similar episode in, uh, happen earlier in Season 6. Um, Operation Recess and Operation Hamster, with Operation Hamster being a, a midquill or an interquill for the events of Operation Recess. So, um, yes, Operation Science and Operation Amish follow that tradition. Um, Operation Amish is a sequel to Operation Science because it takes place after the 2x4 technology convention has occurred. Or, yes, this segment picks up right after the convention has ended. And we find out that Sector F uh, was the sector that won the Chocolate Wrench Award this year. And although, although the item wasn't shown during Operation Science, an item from the convention also played a role in this uh, segment, Number 42's Treehouse Seeds uh, invention. And Number 42's invention does help to explain um, how tree houses are created, or at least a recent um, Yes, uh, number 42's uh, item does reveal at least the latest way that Kids Next Door operatives uh, get their tree houses or the sectors, how the different sectors of the Kids Next Door op uh, organization are able to get their um, tree houses quickly. At least this is the most recent method. Um, so yeah, they don't really clarify about any of the other older methods, except for Sector A's method, which is just growing a tree the natural way, which takes quite a bit of time. But number Jebediah in particular at least isn't in any rush to have the treehouse fully grown, even though he'll probably be decommissioned by the time uh, that happens, unless he's part of the Teens Next Door um, undercover organization or sub-organization, but uh, that's neither, but I digress. Um, yeah, so we did get to learn about a new sector in um, the Kids Next Door organization, Sector A, the Amish sector. And yes, um, yes, um, the Amish, or yes, the Amish culture doesn't use technology. So yes, it, so some fans were definitely surprised that the Kids Next Door organization had a sector, um, had an Amish sector because of how 2x4 technology is very important to the Kids Next Door organization. So I know some fans were um, surprised by that. 
I mean, some fans thought it was nice that they're not um, leaving out certain kids of different cultures, but yeah, it still does seem like it would be quite a challenge for the um, Sector A operatives um, without 2x4 technology like the rest of the um, sectors in the organization. Or yes, um, yes, um, not having 2x4 technology in the Sector A in Sector A, when the other sectors use 2x4 technology, that would be quite a challenge for the Sector A operatives. And number two definitely wasn't uh, thrilled that he couldn't use any 2x4 technology uh, or build any while he was at Sector A. Although um, the Rainbow Monkey's website actually revealed an interesting detail, even though Number Jebediah is very vocal about not using 2x4 technology, the Rainbow Monkey's website actually reveals that Number Jebediah hides some video games under his bed. So, <laughs> so yeah, that was um. So I thought that was a pretty cool by behind the scenes detail that was revealed years after the series had ended, and by the end of the segment, uh, Sector A does have a fully functional treehouse. Um, thanks to number two using number 42's treehouse uh, seed seed item. So I know some fans are wondering though, will Sector A still use the treehouse because of their usual stance? Um, even though the um, even though um, they have the treehouse now, will they still use it since their usual stance against two by four technology? Although, yeah, some fans think maybe so because of this recent revelation with number Jebediah actually hiding video games. And we find out that number Rebecca actually does like to sneak off and uh, watch some TV. Um, uh, so, or yeah, number Rebecca sneaks off to watch some TV and she's willing to use 2x4 technology. We don't really see what number Ezekiel is, or they never really clarify if number Ezekiel secretly uses 2x4 technology or not, or technology in general, but um, maybe that's a detail they can explore in the sequel series or the spin-off series, provided that it ever does see the light of day, of course. So, fingers crossed that it does eventually happen. But, otherwise, yeah, oh, that's right, yes, the Sector A operatives, um, or yes, besides their, despite the fact that they're, they allegedly don't use 2x4 technology, um, the Sector A operatives' code names or designated numbers, um, are not actually numbers. And it was funny how number two pointed that out because number two's younger brother wanted to use the code name or designated number of number T when he was part of the Kids Next Door organization. And there was at least a few other operatives or one or two other, or yeah, number one and one other, sec, or yeah, number one and one other Kids Next Door operative had pointed out that T isn't a number. But yeah, apparently uh, Tommy wasn't the only uh, kids next door operative, um, past or present operative, um, or current or former. Yes, Tommy wasn't the only kids next door operative, uh, former or current, who used um, who used a code name or designated number that isn't actually a number. But yeah, it goes to show Tommy wasn't the only operative who uh, didn't actually use a number in his code name or designated number. Though I would imagine that. Um, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised though if some operatives might have mocked um, mocked the Sector A operatives over it. Um, number two, at least, wasn't um, wasn't insulting about it, or he wasn't malicious. He just pointed out that it wasn't a number. But besides that, um, the other detail about this segment is it actually ties into another number two spotlight appearance, Operation Message. At the end of Operation Message. It was revealed that the uh, message from Egbert Eggleston to Muffy Jenkins was a warning about the splinter cell being real. And we do get a little more details about the splinter cell here. Um, number one reveals that the splinter cell are a group of extremists within the organization that want to eliminate all adults, regardless on whether they're good, bad, or morally ambiguous. And I did mention this in Operation Message. But um, you actually have met the Splinter Cell already. Assuming you've been watching season six uh, in in its uh, proper order or production order or chronological order, um, yeah, if you've been watching um, season six in production order and or if you've been following along with these recap and thoughts videos, then you already met the Splinter Cell. Although they weren't explicitly revealed to be the Splinter Cell just yet, and there's still more secrets about them that haven't been revealed uh, just yet, at least not in the videos that haven't been covered uh, for the entries on this channel. Or yes, we haven't recorded the videos 
uh, for the entries dedicated to those other details about the Splinter Cell just yet. But the next episode, which will be a full episode, um, does shed a little more light about this. Um, I might as well bring this up right now, but um, uh, initially when this episode and um, both the segments of this episode and um, the next episode had initially aired on TV, they were actually aired out of order um, because the next episode actually references this segment. So yeah, that's why I decided to cover it in the production order. Um, having Operation Science and Operation Amish first before episode 76. Um, but yes, um, uh, we'll go into a little detail about that, but, or yeah, we'll cross that bridge when we eventually get to that, but you can be, you can be assured that there is um, more to talk about with regards to the Splinter Cell and uh, more secrets about them. But yes, um, the Splinter Cell actually weren't present, they were a red herring, so even though more details about the Splinter Cell were revealed, they didn't actually, um, or the Splinter Cell weren't actually um, the villains of this uh, entry. There actually wasn't any, or yes, there really wasn't any villains in this entry. Um, yes, this segment actually didn't feature any villains in it. It was just, um, it was just um, a trick. Or yes, most of the um, most of the characters were led to believe that there were villains, but there actually weren't any villains. And it wasn't just the red herring about the Splinter Cell, or those Caterpillar vehicles weren't actually affiliated with the Splinter Cell, but they also did try to pull a red herring with making us believe that number Rebecca was an, ad was an enemy or a villain or an adversary or an antagonist, but she actually isn't. Um, she just uh, wanted to go watch some TV and was encouraging number two to um, uh, join her and the, um, and the kids next door scientists. Although it does bring up a good point, um, uh, most fans were surprised that if the Kids Next Door scientists had planned this uh, elaborate uh, trick, why did they tell number two? Or yes, number two, um, considering that they were going to uh, have number two come along with them, um, it does seem weird that they didn't give him a heads up about it ahead of time so he could play along with the trick. But yeah, I'm sure there might be some fan works out there. Or yes, I wouldn't be surprised if there are some fan works that try to offer some possible explanations for why number two was in the dark about this plan uh, or this elaborate trick that most of the kids next door scientists were playing on other operatives in the organization. And again, um, yes, Dr. Timespace in the Continuums is a reference to Doctor Who, but I wasn't aware of that when I first watched the segment back when it first aired on TV. I wasn't aware of Doctor Who or had no idea um, that this was supposed to be a reference to Doctor Who. That was a reference that flew over my head, but after being made aware of it years later and revisiting this uh, segment for these Recap and Thoughts videos, I now get the, I now understand the reference. But it is funny how, um, I have mentioned before how funny it is that Codename Kids Next Door had referenced things that uh, went over my head initially, but it ended up being um, my first exposure to these um, to these um, different franchises, even if I wasn't aware of it at the time. But otherwise, I would say that's about it now. For now, yes, I would say that's it for um, for this one. So to summarize, um, I did enjoy how this segment gave us a little more insight on another sector in the organization, Sector A. And we do get to see that even though Sector A seems like it would be at a disadvantage for not using 2x4 technology like the rest of the organization, at least some of the um, operatives have been revealed to use technology uh, despite the uh, claim that Sector A doesn't use 2x4 technology. And yeah, I thought it was cool how this was a sequel to Season 6's art segment, which was also the sibling segment. So we have ourselves another example of two segments from an episode being connected to each other in some way. And yes, this segment also ended up um, hinting at the Splinter Cell, which also happened in another number two uh, uh, spotlight appearance. And the Splinter Cell does tie into something important with season six. Um, number one, or yes, um, the Splinter Cell are interested in a Sector V operative, but not number two, like number one suspected. And we'll go into greater detail about that uh, in future Recap and Thoughts videos for the entries that remain for codenamed Kids Next Door that relate to the Splinter Cell. But otherwise, um, yeah, I would say that's about it. So 
Yeah, I like this number two spotlight appearance, and I liked how um, we got to see more about another sector and hints about the splinter cell. So there we go. As of this video, we've now discussed the B segment of episode 75 of Codenamed Kids Next Door on this channel. Take care, and until next time...